All right, we have finished our proving grounds, our first proving ground project, and now we are getting into our animation project. And the problem with animation is usually it takes a lot of people a lot of time to put anything together that's worthwhile for animation. We need to be introduced to time-based design here, and we're going to do it as a GIF transformation assignment. And it is very possible to do it as one person. Um, and we're going to, the mistake students make is not giving themselves enough time to work with it. So we start today, we work on it all next class, we work on it all next Monday's class, and then it is due a week from this coming Wednesday. Right? Even with that, a mistake students make, because they think, well, we have several class periods, is not to, to get started right away. We really need to get started right away. So in this class period right now, we're going to try to get the first requirement done for this project, which is our nine frame rough storyboard sketch. We can do it with traditional paper and pencils. They're up at the front of the class. We can do it digitally like I'll be showing you. And let's get introduced to this project. So we're going to go to the home page and I'm going to go to unit modules and you're going to find everything for this animation project which is our final use of compositing in the course, final required use of compositing, in Unit 7. Now, a GIF animation, GIF stands for Graphic Interchange Format. It's actually the earliest form of digital image. And the reason that they're used for animation scripts, all of these little icons that you see moving, those are all GIFs. The reason we use them is because GIFs are limited to only 256 pixel colors. You can never have more than 256 pixel colors. And one of those pixel colors is clear, so it can support transparency. But because it's limited to so few colors out of the millions of pixel options, you can code several layers of animation frames, even like 300 animation frames, and it will all play automatically in a web browser. So it's a really effective way to do an animation script without having to use an external animation player like QuickTime or Flash, which social media sites have embedded into them. So we will also be able to output a movie file from this animation, but we're going to be learning how to design it at optimized for GIF animation. So if we open up Unit 7, it's not just a GIF animation, it's a transformation, which you see with this GIF icon here. And what is a transformation? It means it's not enough just to make something move. That's animating it, but we want it to change state, beginning, middle, to end. So that is the first requirement. You need to showcase a transformation, not just a movement. The second requirement is you need, because this is still relating to compositing, you need to use something that you've designed in class already. So this past student example, this utilizes exercise two, the emoji project, right? And they show that transformation. How does this transform? Well, you have this hat and this confetti being added in, and that's not really a transformation. That's just the setting kind of gets more elaborate. The transformation is that the nose is growing throughout. So you have a change of state. The nose is one way at the beginning, a different way at the end. The tongue coming out with the dollar sign, that's a nice reveal, but that's just a movement test of the tongue, right? So we're going to think about it in a few different ways. One way to think of, of movement is if it's just a movement test, then you can rearrange the frames and it still works. But if it's a transformation, the frames can only go in one direction. The only thing you're turning in for this is the assignment, but there's a lot of aspects to it. Because we're introducing not just time-based media, we're introducing the idea of a narrative, of storytelling, because we're getting beyond just the single image. And we have to plan for that storytelling. And the way we do that is through a storyboard sketch. So it's called a storyboard because it's mapping out the story. And it's going to be a very rough sketch, but it's where we play with all the elements that are required for story. And those elements are some sort of character, a thing you tell the story through, even if the character is in the setting itself, right? 
So if you want to show lightning striking your landscape, that's going to spark your transformation. How are you going to tell that story? The lightning itself isn't the character because it's only going to be there for an instant. The character might be a tree that the lightning hits and then sets ablaze. And then all the smoke billows from the tree and then it resets and then the lightning hits again and then the tree gets set on fire again. So we're experiencing that lightning through the tree. The tree is the character. We're going to talk about setting. Even when you have a blank setting, uh, the setting is always there. It's always implied. It's like the movie The Matrix. Raise your hand if you've seen the movie from the late 90s, The Matrix. Not enough of you have seen it. All right. But there's a scene in it when there's just a white setting. And you have your characters in just this complete empty white setting. It's called the construct. And it's like they're loading a video game character and loading it with stuff like weapons, right? Even just that white blankness is a setting because we take whatever clues we can get to understand what it is. So in this example, we have this party hat that drops and this confetti. And so even though it's a blank setting, we feel like, oh, it's probably an interior and a party, right? So we make assumptions about the setting and you want to be able to use that for your story. And then the last thing you need for narrative, for storytelling, is the illusion of time passing. And the illusion of time passing is not possible in a single still image. I call it a postcard. What you need are sequential images to tell that story. So in this one, you have it kind of as a comic book here, and you can see how time passes as you jump over these gutters from one image to the next, and that's what will plan out in your storyboard. But when you actually animate it, you get to decide how much time you spend on each frame. You might spend a fraction of a second. You might spend several seconds like this one does to show that kind of frozen state before it slowly starts to thaw, right? So those are the three elements required for a narrative, character setting, and the illusion of time passing. For more examples, we can look at the imgur. Remember, you can log in just using links. But these are, are ones that students were proud of. I thought this one was pretty funny, adapting their emoji. So what's the transformation? The transformation is the change of color. Right. Here we have one that uses their character and their setting. And then all they're going to do, even though there's some fancy camera moves going on, is grow these antlers. So show that their creature is transforming by having these antlers grow. And then they use the glowing of the antlers to reset the scene. And you're not required to have it loop smoothly. That's called setting to reset. But it makes it a lot more satisfying to watch over and over again if it resets itself smoothly. So we'll learn how to do that. So there's that transformation. And then set to reset. Here we have the storyboard, again, based on the emoji and transforming it. And then their refined storyboard basically includes every frame of animation they did. But you don't need to do that. You can still tell the story with just nine well-selected frames. But by having more frames, you're going to get smoother animation. So sometimes our animations are only nine frames. That's the minimum. Sometimes they're 20. Sometimes they're 50. Sometimes they're over 100. You know, it just kind of depends on, on what effect we're trying to get. The easiest way to transform an environment is to introduce organic chaos. So I really like this one. It's just a really basic way of transforming a scene. And all they did was add a lot of composited fire and then smoke. And then they let it layer, let it move, let it clear out, let it start again. <laughs> So even though they're using their landscape, you can always composite in or use new stuff. You can even just draw things to change yours. Right. And then this is a fun one that includes their creature and their landscape. Right, Introducing some organic chaos. But then in, in, the, in the interest of kind of just drawing your own pixels, which you can do for the first time here, like for the, the laser beams coming from the eyes, they just drew those in. 
you know, you don't need to composite everything. But I like, what, where's the transformation? The transformation is in the setting. And there's a nice little change of expression that happens too, that kind of sells it. All right, you can always do a nuclear attack. You can always have your thing self-emulate, right? And that's what's fun. They, they drew their own skeleton, right? So they had their creature composite, and then they drew the skeleton and, and let the fire kind of envelop it. And then one easy way to set something to reset is just to play it backwards. Sometimes that works. It works in this case. All right, on and on and on. It can be simple, but we got to try to fit it in with the time we have. And we can play with the timing. And I have not thought at all about what I want to do. But you can use your creature and your landscape. And then you can decide to introduce a new creature. So the transformation here is in the, the weather, right? But then I just have a new creature come in. Things like that. All right. Let's get to the assignment. So in order to showcase a transformation, you're going to have to pick what previous thing you've designed you want to use. And because I'm using my creature and landscape in the morning class, for this class, I would like to use my emoji. So I'm going to go to exercise two, my emoji design, and just have this open. This is my PNG of my emoji. And think what kind of transformation might work for that. And I can add new elements. So here are some emoji animations. This one's just an animation, just a movement test, but both of these transform. This one transforms in state with the components of the emoji. This one transforms by introducing new elements to it, right? And then you have this kind of effect that's introduced. So of this, it might be interesting to start with a book that's that's uh, maybe closed and maybe it kind of drops on to like a curious looking expression. I'm just talking out loud here. And then the book opens and there's like enlightenment and wonder. Ooh, reading. Ooh. And then it starts to set fire. Ah, scary. And then the expression, be and then the smoke gathers and the expression gets more concerned. Right? That would be a transformation, right? Okay. What's nice about using your emoji is all of this was done with vector shapes in, in PhotoP, all very controlled and clean. And so even though screen animations are going to be a smaller resolution, they're going to be 8 by 8 inches at 100 pixels per inch. The reason is because animations require a lot of layers, a lot of components, especially if we're, we're building them in PhotoP. And if we did them at full print resolution, that would just take a lot of needless memory because you can't print an animation. You can only view it on a screen, right? So it makes sense to do something that's optimized for screen resolution. And so we're doing 100 pix pixels per inch, which is above 72. But our refined storyboard at the end, which will include our, our nine chosen frames, that we will make 30 by 40 inches at 100 pixels per inch, which equates to around 8 by 10 by 300 pixels per inch. So this will be our printed version of our animation skills for our print portfolio. All right. So now that I have kind of chosen what I want to, to start with anyway, I need to make my rough storyboard. So this is a good professional example to look at. This is an artist named Evan M. Cohen. He does a digital prints. He does animations. If you just take one of his digital prints here and you animate these nine frames this is what you get this is what's called an animatic and it does the whole story it tells the whole f scene right but then when he wants to animate it fully he adds a lot of in-between frames they're called tweens or in-betweens to smooth it out and he might add some other features but the important thing for a gif animation is that it showcases the transformation clearly 
So that's what we're going to focus on for our storyboard sketch.